There are a lot of new consumer video cameras around that shoot HD footage. And a lot of them are designed so that you can upload your footage directly to YouTube, and you can, and, and the, the results are beautiful, uh, they're outstanding. Uh, but, you know, a lot of times you don't want to upload an entire clip of something because it's got a lot of, you know, bad motion or out of focus or, you know, parts you just want to be able to edit out of uh, the final product. And that's what this tutorial is about. Almost all of these uh, new consumer video cameras are SD card based and use some flavor of ABC HD. And not all of them are compatible with Final Cut. Actually not any that I've tested, but there are so many and I've only tested really two of them. Three of them, actually three. The main camcorder I'm using these days is a Samsung HMX H204 and it saves video files in Samsung AVC which is proprietary I'm sure uh, with AAC audio at 48 kilohertz stereo. Now the 1080i format and the 720p formats both use the same frame rate of 59.94 frames per second. And I've tested this. I've converted the video files directly from the camcorder into ProRes, which is Final Cut's native language, at 59.94 frames per second. And Final Cut still doesn't like it. So uh, it's got to be the frame rate. Actually, let me back up a minute. Let me show you. I have Final Cut here. And I'm going to use the log and transfer. And I have a test file here in a test folder. And this is a clip that I took that I converted to 59.94 frames per second ProRes, 4x4. And when I go to open it, this is what I get. It contains unsupported media. And I was like, what? I mean, it's ProRes, right? But Final Cut doesn't like it. All right, so we're kind of stuck. We can't use log and transfer. It's not coming out of the camera into Final Cut. So we have to figure out a different workflow. Let me hide Final Cut here for a minute. Now here's a bunch of raw files that I've imported from my camera. And I'm in Finder. Okay, this is the folder. You know, was, uh, I uploaded these on April the 8th this year. And these are all the files. Well, one of the cool things about OS X, or especially Snow Leopard, is that when you go to the icon view here you actually get a thumbnail of each video file and you can preview your videos by simply clicking the play button right here in the finder or selecting the file and tapping the space bar that is so cool i love this feature tap the space bar again and it goes down Here's another one. Okay, so I can preview my clips really quick and figure out which ones I want to use. <coughs> Fine. Uh, I've seen a lot of places where, you know, it's recommended that you import your video files into iMovie or MPEG Stream Clip and um, various other pieces of software. This video is about QuickTime 7. QuickTime 7 is, for Final Cut users, QuickTime 7 Pro is automatically enabled once it's installed. Okay, if you have a Final Cut license, then you have a QuickTime Pro license. So you can find the application if it's not already installed on your OS X installer disk in the extras folder. Install QuickTime. When QuickTime is installed it will be in your applications utilities folder. Applications um, utilities here. You can just grab that and move it up into your applications folder. It's where I keep mine right here QuickTime 7 right next to QuickTime Player. Make sure it's named QuickTime Player 7 otherwise you'll overwrite the 
QuickTime X player. <coughs> okay. So I have a clip here and I need to and I want to use this in Final Cut for something, so I'll go to open with QuickTime Player 7. I can hit Command 3 to get down to here and let's take a look at some of the features of QuickTime 7. Uh, right off the bat you've got the uh, time here. You can scroll through here. You can see how much processor power, if you look up here, it takes to go through ABC HD in real time. And this shows uh, the current time but you can click on this and go to frame number so you can specify which frames you want out of this now every time I turn off the camera I've got some kind of camera motion at the end of every clip see right there and I usually want to trim that off so you've got these little in and out markers here but you can just move the playhead to where you want this to stop type O and that'll mark an out point you can move the playhead to somewhere in the beginning say right there it doesn't matter for this clip type an end point type command C to copy because you never want to mess with your originals if you've listened to my other tutorials on Photoshop don't mess with the originals Okay, to create a new player, command N and then just paste. Okay. Let me get this down a little bit here. Let's take a look at the differences. We haven't transcoded, re-encoded, or anything with this clip. We have made just the clip of the frames that we want to export. like so and if you type command I and get the info window you'll see that the format of this video is still Samsung ABC 1920 by 1080 AAC stereo 48 kilohertz frame rate is still 5994 uh, the data rate is still very high at 17.55 megabits per second. It's very respectable. Now if we look at the original, the data rate here is 17.2 megabits per second. To explain this, ABC is a variable bit rate encoding. Uh, so that the and I and what I believe is is that uh, QuickTime is got the average bit rate for the entire clip here, and for this sub clip, we have a new average bit rate of 17.55. A smaller clip might actually have a higher one. However, I've seen the data rate jump up from about 17 point something to over 20 megabits per second in smaller clips so I'm guessing that the averaging of the bit rate uh, accounts for this variation otherwise all the other specifications for the files are exactly the same so we haven't really changed anything with this copy and paste in this new document <coughs> From here, we're just going to um, we've got our clip, and we want this to be something we can import into Final Cut. And so we will go to Export and Options. I'm going to set for these. There's no transparency or anything, and uh, I think that four by four is probably a little bit of overkill for this. Um, <coughs> 422HQ has a remarkable bandwidth. You could probably get away with LT. Proxies, um, I don't know, maybe a little low, but depending on your um, memory requirements, 
your choice of ProRes encoding would be something that you should experiment with and find out what's best for you because, you know, I mean, ProRes creates huge, huge files. You, since I don't mess with my originals, I keep them as archive. The ProRes versions of these files are expendable after the project is completed. I just delete all of them. There is no reason to keep them around. You need to change the frame rate to an even 60. I leave all of this unchecked, the interlace and the chroma stuff here. Okay, and for the size, make sure you have the same size you want. I mean the same size as the original here. But um, anyway, for the 1080i footage, you'll probably want a uh, final cut to do the deinterlacing. So just leave this as an interlaced file. Okay. Your sound settings, they should be Apple lossless or linear PCM. Whatever your sequences are preset for uh, is a good idea. Final Cut handles linear PCM quite well. Apple lossless is an AIF file. Uh, render settings that better, that's fine. You don't need best, for sure. You do not need to prepare for internet streaming. This is not a streaming file. Give it a name. And we'll just go ahead and save. Okay, there we go. So, we already know we can't move these into Final Cut, but let's see how this one did. Let's switch back over to Final Cut. Um, go to the Finder. I'll find my test folder. I'll move my roses clip into Final Cut and it accepted it right away. Just drag it on, drop it in the timeline, accept the changes. It's in ProRes. Takes no time at all to render the audio. And there it is. Take a look at the sequence settings. We see that the editing time base is 60 frames per second. Apple ProRes 422HQ. Okay. Double click on that. Go to video, de interlace. Alright, we'll go frame by frame, take a look at this. Alright, you can edit this any way you want, add transitions, add overlays, whatever it is, and when you get ready to export it, save. I usually render out in um, Final Cut first. This is taking a little bit of time because I added the deinterlace filter. Okay. Now what you want to do is export this, your final project, as a QuickTime movie. Current settings include audio and video and uncheck, make sure this is unchecked, make movie self-contained. It's done. 
I mean, it, the, this was already rendered. It takes Final Cut almost no time at all to save a reference file of this movie. So, moving back into Finder, here is our movie. You can open that up in QuickTime Player 7. Okay, that's the movie. I'm going to size this down, and now I'm going to export this as an H.264 file. Settings. H.264. This is for uploading to YouTube. I'm going to set the frame rate to 30. I'm going to set the keyframes to automatic. Uncheck frame reordering. I'm going to restrict this to 3500 kilobits per second. Optimize for streaming. Notice that you cannot move this to best. Okay, this is fixed based on what you've restricted your data rate to. But you do want to check best quality multi pass. Click OK. You want to make sure your size is the proper size of the video, either 1080 or 720, whatever. It's already progressive. So you do not need to check deinterlace and you don't need to check the preserve the aspect ratio. Not for YouTube. Sound settings, you're going to change from lossless to AAC. Uh, it can either be 48 or 44.1. For YouTube, 44.1 is great. Show the advanced settings. I usually set the quality to better. You can go with variable bit rate. If you move it up to here, somewhere in the 192, this is about 192. You hit OK and check the compression. All right, that's 160. I can go back and move that up just a hair more. 192. Prepare for internet streaming with fast start. I usually mark this as an H.264 movie file and save. Now watch these. QuickTime Player Pro utilizes all your cores. This is a quad-core iMac with an i7 with hyper-threading. So it has virtual 8 cores. And it just smoked that file. It's one of the fastest transcoders that I've seen for the Mac. So here is our Re-encoded movie, ready for upload to YouTube. I'm going to full screen. I'm in QuickTime Player X now. I'm going to show the details. Command-I will open this info window. I'm at H.264, 1080, 30 frames. Data size is 5.4 megabytes, not bad. And the data rate is 3.67 megabits per second. This will upload beautifully to YouTube. Let's take a look at the original. Color saturation is a little bit better in the original, but otherwise the Clarity and detail, there's almost no detectable blocking. And this will make a wonderful video for YouTube. Let's go stop this, go to full screen. There you have it. I re highly recommend Finder and QuickTime Pro for part of your setup workflow and for your transcoding from your Final Cut project, which you should save as a reference movie 
to all the rendered clips that you have in Final Cut which shortens the uh, amount of time it takes to do all of this work and then finish off with QuickTime Pro to re-encode to finally transcode into H.264 to finish the project for uploading to YouTube.